Hello, and thank you for watching this presentation by the American Iron Society. Please support the organization by becoming a member. Go to irises.org and click on join. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of background. Originally, I came from the Hudson Valley of New York. Uh, I didn't really know anything about aerobreds back then. I had attended a show of my local Iris Society, and one of the judges came in, and he, ha he was growing aerobreds, and he brought a couple to the show. So my first reaction is, what are these? And he told me, and he says, you should try growing them. Well, of course, I went to the catalogs and started buying arrow breads without having any idea how to grow them, which I'm hoping that everybody tonight will get some idea of how to grow them so you won't have that experience. But what I found was that in New York, yes, you can grow these. The ones that I was successful with were the ones that they had the least amount of arrow content. And I'll explain that as we go along. The other thing I discovered was the one, the ones that I happened to put on a hill where the water ran off, they grew well. 11 years ago, I moved to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and then started a big collection of, of arrow bred irises. Along the way, I started to grow some aerial irises, though I have very few of them. They are a challenge and we'll go over that. Uh, if there's one thing that people can take away today from this presentation is the difference between aerial and aerial bred irises. Aerial irises are the species, the pure species, as well as hybrids of the species. Aerial bred irises are irises that are crosses of aerial irises and the bearded classes that you're most familiar with are otherwise known as eupogon irises, such as tall beardeds, MTBs, SDBs, et cetera. What most people grow are aerial bred irises and what you'll find is arrow bred irises are much less challenging. And of course, it depends on how much arrow content is there. But people have a tendency to call arrow bred irises arrow irises. And the downside of that is if you go and see great irises that you love here, and somebody tells you they're growing these great arrow irises, and you buy them, and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to kill them. So if you, if you call them what they are, which is arrow bred irises, you have a better chance of being successful. Another reason to grow arrow bred irises, besides the fact that they're so beautiful, is they, they're among the earliest irises that bloom in the garden. So they kind of bloom with the SDBs or sometimes before the SDBs. Here in New Mexico, the arrow breads will start blooming late March. So in this program, I'm going to go through some descriptions of arrows and arrow breads and the different uh, categories of them. And then there'll be a bunch of pictures by categories so you can see what, what's available. Generally speaking, most of the irises in this program are available, uh, except for the arrow irises. But the arrow bred irises the ones that I've chosen are mostly available. So if you look at this introductory screen, the iris on the left is a pure aerial species. It's called Hogiana. It's a regalia species. And the one on the right is called Chihuahua Knight. It's an aerial bred and it's my first aerial bred introduction as a hybridizer. The mountains you see in the picture are the Oregon Mountains. The Oregon Mountains are uh, featured in Las Cruces. And next year, we're going to have the 2022 National Convention here. So we're hoping that everybody comes and they will see the Oregon Mountains wherever you turn. 
So this is type of aerial content. And I know it's a lot of alphabet soup, but it's really important to know if you're going to grow arils and arrow bred irises. The pure arils are at the top. You have two main groups of arrow irises, Oncocyclus and Regalia. And in the middle, you have where they're crossed together. So Oncocyclus, you have hybrids as well as the species, same for the Regalias. When you cross an Oncocyclus or, or with a Regalia or other way around, you will have either an Oncogelia or a, a Regalia cyclus. Most commonly when you uh, look to buy arrowbred irises and all the rest of them are arrowbred irises. Anywhere you see a bee means that there's a bearded iris in the cross. So you'll see that generally speaking, the more arrow content you have, the closer it is to an arrow and it's, and it's harder to grow. So the, the OB plus, OGB plus, RB plus are all more than half arrow content. So they're closer to being the pure species than they are to being the bearded species. The most common ones you're gonna find are the middle group there, which is the OB, OGB and RB which is half and half, it's half arrow, half, half of bearded iris. And I find that if you wanna get the arrow form in the arrow bred irises, I find that the halves are generally the best place to go. Those are the ones that I like the best. However, if you're a beginner, you certainly need to start with the minuses, the OB minus, OGB minus, and RB minus, because they're less than half arrow, and those you can pretty much grow with your tall bearded iris. The others take a little bit more special care. So what these are, are arrow seeds. The uh, collar on the iris, or the white that you see there, is what's called an arrow, and that's how they got their name. Uh, I got this picture from, from the web. I don't know if they're pure arrows or arrow breads, but you'll generally find that if you hybridize these irises, the arrow breads will generally have a collar also. So to know how difficult they are to grow, it's important to know where the species come from. The Oncocycli come from the Middle East. If you see where I'm showing on the map, it's uh, places like uh, Jordan and Israel and Iraq, to some point part of Iran, part of Turkey. It's more desert country. The regalias are more in the mountains of, of the Near East, places that I consider the stands or a lot of the, for, like Kazakhstan, the former Soviet republics. So this is a picture of what Oncocyclus country looks like. So it's very sparse growth of desert country. Um, I would guess in the United States, it would probably be closest to the Mojave Desert of California. This is regalia country. So in this country, you can see there's more, more uh, green, uh, more rain, so what you'll find is that the regalias are easy to cross, or easy to grow, I'm sorry. What, so, so what the modern arrow bred irises have a cross of both of them, and there's differences in the forms. So here's some of the Oncocyclus species. What you find with most of them is they're, they're rounded in form, um, and they, have, a lot of them have a signal, which is that dark spot you'll see on the falls. And these are just sa samples of some of the some of the uh, Oncocyclo species that are in the background of many arrowbred irises. These are the regalia species. So the note the difference you'll notice 
with the regalia species is you'll find a lot of veining in the standards and falls, and you'll find that they're more narrow, they're more tall and narrow. So we saw Hogiana before, Curacolii is another one that it has, it has a signal, but the signal tends to be more of a, a V shape on the regalia species. So here's an example of two Oncocyclus hybrids. So these are crosses of two Oncocyclus species. Baghdad's Beauty was from Lloyd Austin back in 1958 and Galilee Prince from Luella Danielson, who was also from Southern New Mexico. Uh, you don't see a lot of new aerial uh, crosses in this day and age. These are regalia hybrids and Stonehenge is, these are both from Elm Jensen, who I believe lives in Washington state. Uh, the one on the left is from 1987 and the one Fear No Darkness is from 2010. These are Oncogelias. So Oncogelias are again, crosses of Oncocyclus and Regalia. Persian Pansy and Macedonia. You can see more of the Oncocyclus form in these, in these flowers as, as they're the predominance and that's why they're Oncogelia. These two are Regalia cyclus. Dardanus is, you'll find that in a lot of catalogs and I don't know if it's the real iris, I've never tried to grow it. But again, you can see that it, I think it looks a lot like Caracolii and Tzatziki Bandit, that's another one and that one that one is readily available. So how to grow, how to grow these irises? So these are general rules. They're not hard and fast, but generally the less aerial content, the easier to grow. The more regalia, the easier to grow. The less oncocyclus, the easier to grow. And your best bet is to check with local, local growers because these perform differently in different climates. And there's, there's examples of some pluses or more than half arrow, arrow breads that are fairly easy to grow. And there's some minuses that are not so easy to grow. The chart below, and again, this is, this is pretty much um, a, a guideline, it's not hard and fast. OGB minuses are the easiest to grow. If you go to the other corner of the, of the diagram, OB minus, OB pluses are the most challenging to grow. And why is that? Well, in the case of the OGB minus, you're looking at an iris that has both onc oncocyclos and regalia, and it's a bigger percentage of bearded iris than arrow iris. On the other side of that diagram at the bottom, the OB plus is just oncocyclus, which if we remember is from the very desert climates of the Middle East and bearded iris, but it has more arrow than bearded iris. So I wanna talk a little bit about arrow bred medians and dwarfs. So, Arrow bred medians have been around for a while, but there's been no official uh, designation of them. They're, they've been considered things like arrow meds. Uh, and of course we want, this is stuff that we're hoping that'll be in the new judge's handbook. Once it's approved, it'll be a guideline for hybridizers and everybody else. But what you need to know is while these are median and dwarf irises, they are arrow breads. The primary designator of these irises are gonna be OGB or RB, plus, minus, et cetera. These help you if you decide what you wanna grow in your garden as a height designator. The arrow bread dwarfs or any arrow bread with a registered height of less than 13 inches. 
Now, when you talk about the aerial species that are in the background of aerial bred medians and dwarfs, aerial species range from uh, irises that are five, six inches tall to iris gatesii, which is the tallest one at 26 inches. So they're in, a, in fact tall, they're in fact shorter than any irises in the bearded class, which even the median irises are up to 27 inches, the tallest of which are taller than the tallest of the aerial species. And of course, when you put tall beardeds into the cross, they can be 40 inches or taller. So in the case of the dwarf, it, it's anything less than 13 inches with, an, with aerial and bearded uh, irises. Aerial bred medians or any irises of one half aerial complement or less between 13 and 22 inches. Why we don't consider any irises that are um, between 13 and 22 inches that are greater than half aerial content is because they're closer to the aerial species and therefore uh, they're, they don't really qualify in that respect. Most of the aerial bred medians have iris puma in them, which are either standard dwarfs or miniature dwarfs, but that's not a hard and fast rule. If you take the, variety, the greatest variety of aerial bred irises that have SDB and MDB in them, you're gonna find that most of them fall between 13 and 22 inches. Now it's also possible that you could cross a tall bearded iris with one of the really short aerial species and you'll get something that's in that class. So it's not a hard and fast uh, rule by genetics, but it, we want anything that falls in, the, in that group to be considered an aerial bred median. And again, the aerial bred median, if it's an, if it's an OGB, you would consider it an OGB and parentheses, you would say ABM next to it. So the primary consideration is that it's an aerial bred and the type of aerial content is primary of primary importance. The um, median characteristic is specifically for um, designating height. Aerial bred tall and for, is that basically all the other aerial breds that exceed 22 inches in height. And we don't really use that designation, but for the purposes of knowing the difference in height, that's what we're, we're looking at. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of aerial bred irises and they're gonna be categorized by the different OBs, OGB, et cetera. So you can see what's available to grow. I'm pretty sure all these are available. These are OB's, Elmore, o, Elmore, these are historic arrow breads. Elmore is an OB minus, and it has the distinction of only, being the only arrow bread that ever won the Dykes medal. Swanenberg is a very old one back to 1912, and that's, that's available I think you can sometimes get that in the Aero Society sale. Engraved is another one from 1953. I believe that's in, will be in one of the convention gardens. So we're gonna go on to OGB pluses. So again, this is Oncocyclus, Regalia, and Bearded Iris. So these are a few that are available. Uh, Full of Surprises is from Sharon McAllister, who's from Las Cruces. Uh, mean Mr. M Mustard is from Pete McGrath in Albuquerque. And Dubai is from Tom Johnson. Now, there's a little bit of discrepancy between this one. It was registered as an OGB plus, but it's sometimes considered an OGB. But uh, these are not too difficult to grow if you want to take the challenge of growing a plus. 
Here's a few more pluses. Hoopla from Luella D Danielson, Persian Dancer uh, from Foster, and Zizza from Rich. Now, Zizza, I find is pretty easy to grow. Now, I, I live here in the desert where arrow breads are easy to grow. So I can't promise this they'll grow well for you elsewhere, but it does grow well here and increases a lot. As you can see, the heights of these, these three irises, one's in the tall category, one's in the median category, uh, two are in the median category. But because these are more than half arrow content, they're not considered arrow bred medians. OB plus, Jeweled Veil from Rich, 1978. Simply because there's no regalia in this, it is probably uh, more difficult to grow. I don't grow this one. And these are these are uh, regalia plus or RB pluses. So uh, white arts and blue arts are both from the Danielsons. And I find they're both pretty easy to grow. Kazakhstan from Elm Jensen from 1989. So the biggest category is, is OGBs, which are Oncocyclus, Regalia, and Bearded Iris. This is what you're going to find most, most of them out there. Some of these are pretty easy to grow. Uh, Navajo Velvet from Sharon McAllister. These are all in the tall class or above 22 inches. Onlooker from Ben Hager. Pirate's Ransoms, a new introduction in 2020 from Paul Black and Refiner's Fire from Pete McGrath. Now, if you want to try a OGB and you don't have much experience, I would recommend OG a Refiner's Fire. That one is very easy to grow. And it, it has also won the white medal, which is the highest award short of the Dykes medal that an arrow bred can win. Okay, so here's some more Sand Dancer. Sand Dancer by Rick Tasco. That's another one that's pretty easy to grow. That increases a lot. Smoke and Hot from Tom Johnson. Sheba's Buell from Howard Shockey from 1994. If you can find irises from Howard Shockey, I highly recommend them if you're up for growing OGBs because you can see that his irises and a lot of them are like this, have this perfectly round form. Yalda from Lawrence Ransom, who was from France and passed away recently. Hey, Hallie. So, yes. There's a question uh, in the chat that uh, from Jeff Bennett says, if you cross two arrows, pure species, do all the seedlings come out the same? Or is it like other irises where you get multiple colors or differences? I've never crossed arrows, but I have to assume that when you cross any, any iris, you're going to get different uh, different results. Okay. Okay. So these are um, OGB and they're arrowbred medians. Anacrusis from Mathis, 20 inches. Omar Stitchery, 16 inches from Boswell. This is another one that's pretty easy to grow. And you can see a lot of the veining in this one that where the, uh, to me, the Hogiana or the uh, regalia comes out in that one. Uh, Spirit of Caleb from Pete McGrath, 22 inches, which is at the top of the median class. Now in the most cases that most hybridizers have not uh, registered these as a, some have as arrow meds or arrow medians, but we're hoping that people will start registering this, them this way. Though again, the height designation is a definition, not a, not a classification. So that's important to consider. These two are uh, OGBs that are arrow bred dwarfs. Aladdin's Gen, 10 inches. The Caro's Prank, again from Elm Jensen, a very recent introduction, five inches tall 
from 2019. These are OBs. Now, you don't see a lot of new OBs because most hybridizers want the, the regalia in their crosses so that they're easier to grow. Uh, I don't grow any of these. Most of them are, most of them are older. There's um, three examples here. One's a, a dwarf, Dizzy Sammy. One's a median, gay stripes. One's my cap, which is a, a tall or a, a standard arrow bread. A lot of the work that was done in the early days of arrow breads was done by C.G. White. He did a tremendous amount of work and has a lot of irises that he created that were OBs and OB minuses. Uh, I don't know anybody that grows them, but if there's anybody out there that does grow them, please let me know. And if they bloom, send me pictures. If you go to the wiki where you'll find pictures for most of these, there's no pictures that I can find of any irises that were hybridized by C.G. White, but he's very, very important in the early days of arrowbred hybridizing. Howie, there's, yes. um, there's a couple of comments. Um, one from uh, Del Perry, if the cross is between two plants of the same species, they will be alike as the species are stable. If two different species are crossed, they will be different. Oh, and of course, I, I assume when you're talking about a cross, you're not making a self cross, so yes. And then uh, uh, another one from uh, Deborah Bilberry in White Rock, New Mexico, the foothills of the Jemez, I don't know how you say that, mountains, we can grow Navajo velvet, which for us, it has been, uh, been easy to grow. We are at 6,300 feet altitude. And, and of course, that's New Mexico, which is even at 6,000 feet is desert country, so. And Navajo velvet is easy for me to grow also, but one of the things uh, before I go on to, to the rest, one of the things that I wanted to say is, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, is the Errol Society for its members is starting a symposium this year, this spring issue of the Errol Society newsletter will have the first version of the symposium. The symposium is not going to be a person, uh, a personality contest or a beauty contest. We're asking people what grows well for them. So the example of Navajo velvet, if that in fact is on the, the ballot, would be a good choice because I can tell you what grew for me in New York. I can tell you what grows great for me in New Mexico. But one of the things that the Errol Society would like to do going forward is to be able to help people decide, you know, which irises will grow in their part of the country. And like we said before, if you're new to this and you know people in your area that are growing them, that's the best place to get started. But hopefully we'll be able to provide more information in the future. And so uh, the there's a question, uh, uh, Carrie Peterson has her hand up. Do you wanna <laughs> unmute yourself and ask the Yes, um, I'm seeing many pictures just with one bloom. Do these have more than one bloom on them or you're talking about a height of one bloom on one stalk? Okay, so the aerial species, the Oncocyclus species has one bloom at the terminal. The Regalia species has two blooms at the terminal. The arrow breads, the more arrow content you have, the less, the less uh, uh, blooms you will have. The more, the closer you get to the bearded iris, the more blooms you'll have. As you get some, you get into the, some of these RBs that are that are halves and OGBs that are halves will have branching and uh, more than more than two flowers. Like for example, my Chihuahua night that you saw at the beginning has one or and sometimes two branches. 
and three to four flowers. As you get down into the OGB minuses, uh, you could have four or five flowers. You're gonna have less than you would in the bearded class, but you will have more than, the, again, the closer you get to the bearded class, the more flowers you'll have. The pictures that I put in this program are pretty much just uh, pictures of the of one flower, not so much the whole stalk, but hopefully that answers the question. The, these three, uh, Afro, Siab, Jeanette, Gardas, and Eastern Blush, um, they're all pretty easy to grow for, uh, because again, they're regalia and bearded iris. They don't have any oncocyclus in them. What I like about the two on the right is they have uh, they have some rims in, in the falls. So that's kind of an, a nice addition. Okay, so there's, these are two uh, regalia bearded, the dwar one dwarf and one median. One's high, high Sierra snow, and this, which is, a, which is, uh, they're actually both, they're both medians. Stolen ginger is from Cindy Rivera also of New Mexico, and that's a fairly new introduction. And you can probably see that that had, if you're familiar with them, that had that stolonifera in its cross. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to the minuses. And these for the are the easiest to grow. Uh, you can pretty much grow them with your tall beardeds. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention about arrowbreds is that they do have a tendency to go dormant in the sum in the summertime. The more the arrows will go dormant. The more arrow content, the more likely they will go dormant. It's not a hard and fast rule, but if you grow them and that happens to you, they're not dead. They're going to come back in the fall. Uh, the minuses, for the most part, they will not go dormant unless you really. They really don't get much water. Uh, these are a couple examples of OGB minuses. Afrit by Marky Smith, Cindy Rivera by Lowell Baumick, and Cup Runneth Over from Sharon McAllister. Uh, that one's really nice. We won best in show with that one time. Hakuna Matata from Anna Cad. Uh, Anna's, I saw Anna's on this. Uh, it's a great iris. It's very easy to grow and it does rebloom in some places. Heart of Hearts by Paul Black, very popular. Uh, at the median convention, uh, they, they put these in, you know, arrow breads within this height range where we're there. Also the median society adds arrow breads to its, that, that fall within the median category to their symposium. I believe Heart of Hearts won, won the uh, best median at one of the median conventions. And I think it also was the best uh, out of region iris at one of the national conventions. Signal Butte from Rick Tasco, another very good one. Omar's Gold, if you need one to start with, this is a great one. It's very easy to grow. It has great aerial form. And of course, as we hybridize, our goal is to make irises that are aerial breads that anybody can grow that look like aerial irises. The uh, Omar's goal just has great form. Pounce from Tom Johnson and Warrior Prince from Rick Tasco. These are a couple of dwarfs. AB Baby from Leonard Branson and Omar's Eye from Boswell. This is Loudmouth. These are OB minuses. And again, you can see these are older. Most people are using OGBs now uh, <laughs> to cross with, with bearded iris. So most of them have regalia in them. But you can see most of them, you see the uh, Oncocycles form in these. Loudmouth, Omar's Torch is another one that's pretty easy to grow. Opals for Ethel and She Devil for 
from Paul Black. These are OB, uh, RB minuses, and these are tall ones. Denials from Kasparik. Pashtun Nightfall and Sandthorn was from Leonard Ransom. Leonard Ransom did a tremendous amount of work with regalias. Mo he does have some irises that have oncocyclus in them, but most of his had just regalia and bearded iris. The one on the left, I had to put it in the show because everybody always comments about the name Sleazy. I don't know why he named it that, but that's the name. Uh, Stars Over Chicago from Henry Danielson, also from the Las Cruces area. And that's one that's fairly easy, that's pretty easy to grow. So here's a bunch of medians, uh, also RB minuses. Child song, that's another one that's fairly easy to grow, pretty common from, from Jensen. Uh, Griggy from, Je from Jensen again, Marabout from Ranson, and Sunflight from Jensen. So I'm going to go on to a few of the irises that I've hybridized. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Aral Trek we had in 2018 and the Aral Society. And then, of course, we'll be open for questions. Chihuahua Night is the first iris that I introduced an Aral bred. The cross is uh, Garnet, Garnetville times Damfino. It's Damfino. I think that part of that cross, Sharon, it's from, they're both from Sharon McAllister. She didn't, uh, she didn't know uh, what part of the cross was. So she just named it that, which it's kind of like, um, um, like I can't think of his name now, but he names irises like that. Chihuahua Knight, uh, it's a great grower. It has, like I mentioned before, you can see it has, if you look down there, it has a branch, has two buds at the terminal, and depending upon whether it has one or two branches, it, uh, it'll have two more flowers. I registered it at 32 inches tall. It's a great grower. Uh, when I divided a bunch of them up to sell to the Aero Society last summer, uh, one, one rhizome had like six increases on it. So it's a great grower. Scarlet Ayers has it in one of the convention gardens. It grew over 40 inches tall in her garden. This one I plan to introduce this summer through the Aero Society. It's go I'm gonna call it Desert Affair. I have the name registered for it. I just haven't registered the iris because I didn't bother to um, count the number of buds and the height and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as that blooms, I'll register it, and then I'll be selling. I'll be selling it through the introducing it through the Aral Society, and then I'll put it in my catalog next year. The cross is Butterfly Affair times Noble Warrior. Um, it, again, it's a pretty good grower. It's an OGB minus. Okay, this is another one out of the same cross uh, that I divided up last fall. So I'm growing that out. I kind of like the, the yellow lines up there in the standards. And the coloration in the falls is quite different than it is for Desert Affair. This is another one that's a uh, an OGB minus that I divided up last year and I'll probably introduce in a year or two. It's Butterfly Affair times Garnetville. It has a typical ar aral form. And uh, again, it, it's pale yellow in the falls and has yellow in the style arms. And you can see the yellow up in the standards. These are some of the seedlings that I really like the best. This is a cross that I made uh, in 2017. It's Absalon's Treachery times Sand Dancer. Uh, 
what I was aiming for was the veining out of sand dancer and the signal out of Absalon's treachery. You, uh, you can see a lot of the veining here in the beginning of a signal on that. That's one of the ones that I like. This is my, this is my favorite. It's got the perfect round form. It's got the veining in both the standards and the falls, and it's got a signal. Um, I'm growing this out. If right now I have something like 28 rhizomes of it, I counted it up yesterday, depending upon how much bloom I get this year and uh, how much increase I have, I'm hoping to introduce this one next year. This one is one that I may introduce this year. Uh, I sent away for a name for this one, which of course I didn't write it down, so I don't remember it. But this one is a prolific grower. It's also out of the same cross. It has veining in the standards and falls and a signal. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the Errol Trek. We had the Errol Trek in um, 2018 in Las Cruces. There were four gardens and one day, one day garden tour. We, had, we visited all four gardens. We expected 50 people. We got 75. This was peak Errol bread bloom season. The Errol uh, bread garden tour, the uh, Errol trek was on April the 8th. Our national convention next year, which I'll talk about at the end, will be one week later. So you'll have both Errol breads and tall bearded blooming. This is Jackie Pountney's garden. Uh, she, this is her Errol bread bed. I think she's got them kind of all over the place. And she's on the program today. If she wants to comment or she can comment later, but she was the first garden we visited. This was my garden. The reason I put in a 2017 uh, picture as opposed to from the actual Errol Trek was because again, I expected 50 people in my garden. My home garden is rather small. Uh, I didn't expect 75 people wandering through my garden. So I couldn't really get a picture of the irises with a lot of people in the garden. So I used these pictures from 2017. But I basically have two beds. My garden is an Errol, an Errol Society display garden. I have one against my south wall and I have one facing east, which you can see the Oregon Mountains in the background. This is Wes Wilson's garden, Wes and Cynthia Wilson. Cynthia is the president of the Messiah Valley Iris Society. This is one of their beds. Um, the late Perry Dyer, when he saw this display, he said it was the best display of Errol breads that he had ever seen. Uh, these are all OGBs and OGB pluses in this bed. The OGB minuses were kind of behind where the buses are. Uh, this garden will be on the 2022 convention tour. Uh, these are not convention irises, but hopefully everybody that comes will have a chance to see lots and lots of Errol breads blooming, though it probably won't be quite as spectacular as it was then, just depending upon how our bloom season is. The last uh, garden on the Errol Trek was Scarlet Airs garden from 2018. Scarlet's garden uh, is also on the national convention tour. These are her, her, her arrow breads, which are in a different, the ones that she's growing are in a different part of the garden. To the left of the picture where you can't really see it is where her convention irises are gonna be. And when we divided up the irises for the convention, um, some gardens just got tall bearded irises. Uh, some irises, uh, some gardens got a combination of irises. Scarlet has a bunch of medians and arrow breads, and she also has Louisianas besides tall beardeds. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the Arrow Society International. So the Arrow Society International is the uh, 
Cooperating Society of the American Iris Society that specializes in the arrow and arrow bred irises. Uh, we have an annual sale every year in June or July. The sale is only open to members of the Errol Society. While there's others like Superstition Iris Garden and Blue Jay Iris that sell a lot of arrow bred irises. If you want both arrow and arrow bred irises, the, by far the largest selection comes from the Errol Society. Membership in the society is $17.50 a year. If you join for three years, it's $50.50. And you'll get a, a coupon worth $12 on the sale this year if you join. This year, for the webinar, I'm making a special where if you join as a three-year member, you will get a fourth year free. In addition, not this offer will apply to not only uh, new members, but existing members of the Aero Society that want to renew for three years. Uh, we decided that uh, we would, we would um, have it until April 15th. Uh, Del Perry is the, plant, is the membership chair. As long as she gets the application by April 15th, we'll honor the extra year. In order to uh, become a member, the easiest way is to go to aerosociety.org. You'll see the, the URL at the bottom and click on membership. There's two ways to join. You could either print out a membership form and send a check-in, or you can click on the PayPal and, pay, and join through PayPal. Whatever way you join, if you join via uh, the mail, on the form that you print out, please put webinar. If you're joining via uh, PayPal in the place for comments, put webinar. So as long as you put webinar on your membership and you join for three years, you'll get the fourth year free uh, as long as you put webinar there. In addition, like I had mentioned earlier, we're gonna have a symposium. We're gonna try to help people uh, pick irises that grow in their part of the world. That's the what we're going to try to do with our symposium. We're going to do it every year. We'll do it in the springtime. Arrow bloom season or arrow bread bloom season starts depending upon where you are in my neck of the woods. It's late March through probably about middle April. Probably I've talked to people in California where they're starting to bloom already. Uh, if you live up north, they'll probably bloom about when your STBs bloom, probably late April, I'm guessing. Um, but uh, get out in the garden and look at these irises. If you don't grow any in your garden and you know people in your area that grow them, go and visit and see them. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have this webinar now was so people could go out. Also, I, again, if you are a member and you're going to participate in the symposium, we want to know what grows well by you. And that's in your garden, not in somebody else's garden. So if you go to a convention or you go somewhere else and you see them growing well, we really want to see what grows well in your garden because that'll really help us help others to pick what grows in their part of the country. Okay, so this is my last slide. Uh, this is our 2022 national convention. It was supposed to be this spring, but unfortunately because of the COVID, uh, we're, we were unable to host it this year. Our convention's called Iris Enchantment. We're gonna have six convention gardens. Blue Jay Iris is our feature garden. There'll be the master planting. And then we have five other Iris gardens, which is uh, Calhoun Iris Farm, uh, New Mexico State University, Fabian Garcia gar uh, uh, Garden, and the Farm and Ranch Museum, which everybody will love because they've given us a place to plant in front of the museum 
but it's a real Western museum where you can learn a lot about the Old West. And there's two member gardens, like uh, I mentioned before, uh, Wes Wilson's garden and Scarlet Air's garden. So depending upon how things go with the COVID, we should be opening up the registration either in late summer or the fall. And we hope we see everybody in Las Cruces next spring where not only will you see arils and arrow breads, you'll see mostly arrow breads, very few of us grow pure arils here, uh, but you'll see lots of other irises. So uh, thank you very much.